Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a new point of view, our digital edition. So good evening, good morning for some of you. Today, which is uh, Thursday, 4 of August, I'm so glad to introduce a new topic, which today it's a kind of conclusion of our four digital weeks. So because we want to talk about how to reshape fashion and merchandising. So I'm so honored to introduce you our two special guest. So Anna La German, welcome. Hi. Hello. Ciao. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Uh, thank you for having me. I'm delighted to join this webinar and thanks for inviting me. Thank you so much to accept our invitation. And I also want to welcome Angelo Visegni. Ciao, Angelo. Ciao. Hello to everybody. Thank you for this invitation. I'm very happy to be part of this conversation. Yeah, so we love to organize this conversation and now I want to discover a little bit more about you because you both are in a two completely different location, of course, like mine. So Anna, where are you now? I'm, I'm in Ukraine at the moment. <laughs> wow, so and any idea to travel? We lose uh, Anna. Yes, in a couple of days. <laughs> yes, finally. And yeah. what about you? You are traveling right now. Yeah, I'm traveling. Basically, I don't know exactly where I am, but uh, I'm in Italy and uh, between, let's say, Milan and uh, uh, Macerata, which is a, a small uh, city in, uh, in the center of Italy. So I just stopped and, um, with a car. And, uh, but anyway, I'm in Italy, let's say. That's, uh, okay, great. I'm way to Milan. Me too. So, I'm very glad to have you here because our conversation is really going to navigate inside of technologies that now are coming up very strongly and between physical and digital. So maybe Anna, you can introduce yourself and explain how you started your, your business, your adventure in a B2C or direct to consumer. Yeah, um, thank you, Orieta. So, hello, everybody, and um, my name is Anna Lajomain. Um, I'm an entrepreneur. So, basically, originally my background was international law, but I always had passion for fashion, <laughs> let's say. And uh, I decided to launch my own company and just uh, learn on practice, basically, because I didn't have an education in fashion. Um, it took me a, quite a bit of time, let's say, but um, in the very end, I'm super happy with the experience that I gained on the way. Um, we started originally with a magazine, Politique, based in London. And um, it was one of the first digital magazines uh, uh, in London or in this, uh, on the scene uh, back then. It was 2011, I guess. And all those big magazines like L'Officiel and Vogue, they've been just making the first step to convert into digital space. So it was quite a challenge, but uh, we succeeded to stay um, alive until now. And I'm really proud of that. Um, after the magazine, we launched a PR agency. It was just natural to do since we built so many connections, traveling the world and meeting different journalists and uh, uh, many top managers, etc. So it was just a natural thing to do. Um, and based on PR and a magazine and working with so many brands, meeting with so many designers worldwide, uh, we realized that um, the last part that we've been missing actually was sales. And uh, we decided to launch a platform direct to consumer and B2B as well, two platforms uh, for international independent designers back in 2012. And it was quite a challenge, I would say. So now we are launching a new platform and I will tell later a bit more about the features and actually digital merchandising and etc. So this is where we stand. <laughs> So Anna, you, now you, you introduced the editorial part and of course the selling part, the B2C. But in the meantime, 
like it to share with Angelo because Angelo is the brand. Or maybe Angelo can introduce a little bit more, which is your position in this game? <laughs> in this game, I'm the, I'm the brand, of course, and uh, I'm maybe I'm the client, no? the customer, because uh, we use the uh, that system when you want to have a digital uh, support. Uh, I'm um, a retail manager. Uh, I have a different history compared to Anna because uh, I always been in the fashion uh, system because it, it, that was the world I like it and I studied for this. And uh, I started as a buyer when I was uh, in, uh, in Italy in a room for a multi-brand uh, company. Then I moved to, to the monobrand uh, experience uh, because I was a city manager of uh, Valentino. And then I moved as a country manager in, uh, in Fendi, always retail. I was always in the retail. And uh, then Bottega Veneta. And now I'm a worldwide retail manager of Santoni. So I always was very focused on uh, retail. So stores, commerce, uh, uh, let's say the, the commercial part of this world. And uh, of course, we, uh, we are very concentrated on the product, on the style, uh, because what the brand has to do in the beginning is to have a good product now and to, to show to the world that you have a good product. And then of course, you have to be supported by a different um, company with merchandising, with uh, you know, digital, uh, with retail, because retail, of course, uh, even if we are moving to the digital commerce, it will be always very important for, for the luxury because people want to have experience, uh, physical experience in the store. And at the same time, they are switching a, a little bit, on, a little bit. Now it's a lot because we are doing uh, a lot of business on e-commerce by a digital experience. So uh, it's a very dynamic job. It's a very dynamic world. And every day something changes and we have to be upgraded every day and to understand what people want before they ask for it. Um, and that's the beauty of this job. I, I like it. It's, I, I like it when you say it's the beauty of this job because talking about the retail scenario, now is really a time that we can see many changes because retail now, it's really, we cannot have the physical experience, but again, we need to have a physical impact on the product. So, Angelo, how can technology can be implemented or integrated in a high quality product retail in this case? Of course, uh, technology is an head value on this system because uh, uh, I believe that people, they, they appreciate you now if you give them a different point of view and a different way to to buy uh, to make a shopping so it can support a lot because uh, of course as i said before people want to have a physical experience with the product they want to see uh, especially when you talk about luxury and when you talk about money for value and that's very important because i think it will be one of the most important uh, uh, challenges in the future People want to spend money, but they want to understand and to to be sure that what they buy is something you no know, very good, with good quality and with good um, uh, environment around. Uh, the technology can help us and to enlarge the market because, of course, even if you uh, if you have a good product, people has to know that you have it. So, by the communication will be very important. You know that most of the people now uh, they don't read magazine anymore they don't read newspaper no they are always online with the telephone with the computer with a pad and so on and so on so it's the best way for the communication and then is a, as i say in the beginning is an ahead value is a, another chance to make shopping uh comfortable shopping because you sit at home or in your office and you have all the time you want without any stress of walking or to be in the store with the cell associated maybe i want to push you to buy something now you are in completely relaxed and you can buy something with the you no know, um without have any any stress and uh, you can stop and start again if you have to do something else so i think it's uh i mean it will be the future but I just want to say that it won't be uh, the future alone. I mean, it will be the future, but 
I believe that the physical experience will be a part of the experience the client wants to do because we want to have always some feeling when we buy. So when you when you buy some good product, you want to touch it, you want to smell it, you want to understand if it's good for you, if it's fit for you, and so on and so on. So you touched the point of communication. So Anna had the idea to merge communication and e-commerce, and also another element, technologies. So now Anna, I'm really curious to, to know more about how could you incorporate technologies? Which technologies you are experiencing right now to emphasize the retail experience? Thanks, Marietta. So, um, first of all, we don't follow trends. And I would like to, to state and to say that basically, uh, we always keep in mind within our team digital emotional intelligence because this is what actually um, helps to drive sales. If we understand the values uh, of our potential consumers and what they want in their lives, then it's much easier to offer the product that they will buy. So, um, as we know that all of us are emotional human beings, emotional beings basically, and in order to increase sales and be successful for different brands, because we work with hundreds of brands all over the world, and um, we basically need to find this soft spot in each person's heart uh, in order to build this um, brand devotion, I would say, loyal customers. And um, that's uh, the first thing that we keep in mind. Uh, then we think how the technology that exists on the market actually can support our goal. And um, there are so many different technologies. And of course, we cannot um, integrate everything. We cannot use everything. But uh, my perfect uh, future for fashion retail is basically, first of all, uh, very important is direct to consumer. Brands need to have independent brands, and even big brands need to have um, their own channels to sell directly to their customers, not just waiting for basically buyers from multi brand stores and shop their collections. Especially after the COVID situation, we understand that uh, sales drop down, and many many brands basically ended up in a very difficult situation and many of them basically just uh, left the market and had to close their companies, uh, including retailers, by the way, because many department stores, they've been focusing on physical so much that in the very end, they kind of forgot about digital and uh, e-commerce. So they're out of, uh, of business. I think this is one of the reasons because they didn't pay attention to mobile commerce and e-commerce. Um, in terms of uh, technologies that we integrate now is one of them that I'm really proud of is artificial intelligence and uh, um, virtual stylists, I would say. Besides having physical stylists, real people behind and building communications, chats and uh, special closed groups uh, to build like micro communities uh, um, of uh, potential customers or existing customers. Uh, we also like uh, to offer this technology that immediately can show you on the website uh, basically what can fit you instead of browsing through thousands of items. This artificial intelligence learns what you like, your behavior on the platform, and uh, after all offers what uh, could actually match your style and taste. Uh, Next one, I believe is uh, super important, is augmented reality and virtual reality. Many people are talking about it, but at the same time, uh, we are trying to integrate it and make uh, widely and my, make a consumer experience more interesting and, and, and enjoyable, I would say. Um, in terms of innovations, uh, nowadays we are trying to be very sustainable and 
educate our customers, build trust within between designers and customers to pre-order. Because this way, designers basically can uh, understand what are the volumes that they're gonna sell and produce exactly the amount that has been pre-ordered. I know it's kind of difficult and maybe not everybody is ready at the moment, but there are already people um, supporting this idea and come on, it, it's been on the market for so many years, it's just not so many people have been using it so far. And I believe that um, it will be a new trend soon to pre-order, to pre-order better high quality items, more expensive but lasting, like timeless pieces. And I'm not talking only about jewelry, I'm also talking about uh, garments um, that you can just pass to generations, not uh, based on uh, based on season. It will be just timeless piece that you can have in your wardrobe. Um, Interesting this part. I, I want to jump inside because talking about pre-order so yeah. made me thinking about digital manufacturing, uh, 3D sampling. So these technologies that now are incorporated in, money, in many manufacturers. In Italy, we have a lot of this kind of switching in the supply chain between hand making, hand crafting, and also digital, uh, let me say, di uh, digital sampling or uh, making some just items that you can see online and then you can do some pre order. So yeah. I think this is one of the technology which is not really related to the way to sell. It's more related to the way to design your objects on your product. Do well, you it's good. Do you think this can be also not only for very young guys, it also for adults? Um, yes, I would like to make this statement and say yes, that 3D technologies actually can sell items even prior to the samples have been produced. But um, there is one important moment that I always like to mention. It's trust between your customers and between the brand and us as a platform. Because if we sell those brands on the platform, we are kind of a guarantor of quality. So customers need to trust us and need to have this good experience uh, of previous orders once they already know that it's a good quality and we treat them well, I believe that they will be actually ready to start making orders based on 3D models. So now I asked you, Angelo, what about imagine some practical, I want to be very practical. So imagine a bag uh, made in a leather or a pair of shoes, maybe a leather, maybe brush off, or a beautiful cashmere jacket. So how retail scenario can incorporate the pre-order and the digital manufacturing? Is this something already on? Or it's too far away. Um, <clears throat> thanks for this question. It's, it's very interesting. Now, I mean, it's, it's already incorporated because, for example, uh, with the problem we had in this last month with the you know, with the pandemic with the COVID, we we had to switch very very fast to this digital world because uh, uh, you know that we had all the stores the the store was closed and locked down, so. For us, it was very important to, to find a different way to generate business. And uh, I have to say that uh, uh, we did a very, very, very fast change. And uh, we offered to our clients uh, exactly what you say, uh, to give them an experience and to make them understand uh, what we are doing, the made in Italy, the manufacturing, the product, and so on and so on by the special system like virtual system that involved them you now to the to uh, to buy the product that convinced them to to get in, in, in our e-commerce digital store 
and to see the product at home because now it was impossible to to walk outside and to and to make a shopping in the store so uh, this situation in this last month helped us a lot uh, moving uh, toward this, this uh, digital market. Uh, what I feel is very important in this, in all this uh, um, market is the information because it, I'm talking about the double information. We have to be informed by our clients. So we work very, very, very strong with the CRM, customer relationship management, because we have to know very well what our customer wants, what our clients this year, what are they what are they looking for, uh, which hobby they have, which style of life they have, because we can be ready to focus our action to the client and convince them to buy something or uh, at least inform them that we have what they what they're looking for. That's very important. And the second time, information is important because you have to find the way to tell them that you are ready for them, that you have what they're looking for and to convince them to buy product from your company compared to the other one. When they know you very well, they know that you have a good quality of cashmere or you have good quality of uh, leather or the manufacturer or your made in Italy is a, a good quality of made in Italy, it will be easier to, to, to move them from the physical to the digital experience because uh, they trust you as before Anna say, they know you and uh, for sure they are sure that what they buy is exactly what they see in front of them, in front of the video. Uh, I mean, just to make a, 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 a simple example, if you see Amazon, people buy Amazon very easy. Sometimes they don't buy the same product in another, I don't know, e-commerce because they don't know the, the brand, they don't know the company, so they don't trust. They say maybe it's not good or it's good. So that's one of the points, information, uh, and of course, to build a relationship with the client. Yeah, I see. And I see this uh, connected also with the responsibility that brands has in terms of sustainability. So because if someone trusts, also knows that the quality is the highest, so the trustability it's something that can be showcased so i think there are no boundaries to say okay i did this here i did that in the other place so maybe anna you can also highlight other technologies that can help to know more like to see some tags knowing more the story making rather than storytelling because we like the concept of story making, it's really building the long lasting and the trust. What do you think, Anna? Um, yes, uh, thank you, Arietta. So, first of all, we all know that consumer behavior changed a lot lately. And based on that, um, also the technologies, communications, and personalization, actually because it came um, into the market, this personalization um, system strategy, I would say, that many brands nowadays uh, uh, integrate as one of the key points to attract uh, potential customers and to build stronger bond a relationship with their existing customers. And it's super important because some companies make a huge mistake, basically, Mm, focusing more on their loyal existing customers rather than also uh, giving enough energy and attention to potential new customers. They can lose so many good clients and this is something to keep in mind. Uh, but uh, those messaging systems and I would even like to mention um, Last year, when we went to Barcelona Retail Summit, actually with Mattel, and there was a very beautiful company, um, interesting one, it's called Hero App, and they work with many retailers, multi-brand as well as mono-brand, uh, which uh, um, enables uh, a customer and a company to engage, and they can exchange videos, messages, um, live actually so if you want to buy from online store 
and you're not sure about the product or maybe it's really expensive and you would like to know a bit more before actually buying it, um, you can just talk to a store manager or to a brand manager, whoever you know is now available um, and actually get to know more about the product. And at the same time, they can even help you to find something else which could fit that item and also make more sales for the company additionally right. and uh, if you don't mind i would like to um mention about um, the fact that companies need to adapt really fast on the market nowadays because there are three main uh, key points that i would like to mention uh, based on the consumer behavior First of all, it's uh, how they get information nowadays. So it's not any more, it's not any longer um, information from the streets, let's say. Um, it's more TV because we watch a lot of Netflix, let's say, and uh, Amazon TV and so on, Apple TV. Um, we also spend a lot of time online, social media and etc. So basically, we need to communicate with our potential customers online, but we need to keep in mind that old advertising techniques don't work anymore. So you cannot just take something that you used to print, add, like a print ad, and just put online by ad on Instagram or Facebook and promote it and expect that consumers will come. No, a digital space has its own rules. And I would say that we need to create a special experience, as you mentioned, 3D technologies, and I don't know, maybe some kind of short movies, etc., to entertain. But also for social media, um, we can create non-professional content, but really exciting that uh, people will want to talk about it and basically drive new traffic and attention to your brand. If somebody really likes what you created, an interesting story that catched attention, they will share with their friends and it will bring more potential customers or at least, you know, brand awards. Second, uh, uh, second part I would uh, like to mention uh, is basically what customers want to buy. Nowadays, their values and needs changed a lot. And since they've been spending so much time at home, first of all, the focus was more on wellness, uh, on healthcare, uh, on groceries, let's say, and um, entertainment. People have not been spending so much on um, luxury or on garments. It was more like comfy um, houseware, let's say. <laughs> So it's, uh, it's very interesting and we need to be really smart how we're gonna attract attention of people and make them want to buy. And again, it's all about building this dialogue and trust. And as um, uh, I've already uh, mentioned to you before this webinar, I would love to say that uh, customers uh, need to find a balance. So they will not be buying as much on the go as they used to. They will be thinking prior to actually buying an item, but they will be investing in something more long lasting and high quality. Um, and um, third one is basically uh, places where, um, where customers are gonna buy. Uh, so based on my previous um, thoughts about retailers and department stores why they went out of business is because they didn't have enough channels to sell so you cannot be only physical you have to be you have to offer omni channel you have to basically offer e-commerce mobile commerce uh, you can sell on instagram and you can sell also physically physical is really important and digital is important so basically creating this word digital is a new retail reality, I would say. Correct. Interesting. So this made me ask into Angelo. In technology, which is the big challenging that you are facing right now in your job, in your daily job? So which technologies you would like to invest, if you can? Yeah, I mean, we are investing a lot because uh, freeze it all we we understand that 
when you invest on technology, uh, you can talk with all over the world without problem, no? Uh, before, if you want to be famous, you will be not in a, somewhere in the world, you have to buy a store, to invest money in the store, to, I don't know, to make some classic and advertising. And it was uh, in some way easy because we knew this way. Now it's, uh, it's different because now with the technology, you can stay at home in your office and you can make a deal with, uh, with many, many uh, brands. And to be inside that world, to be inside that area, just making an example, if you want to have success in, uh, in China, in the Asian market, you must be linked to some you know, uh, brands like Alibaba, Tmall, and so on and so on. So we understand that it's very important. And again, is it very important if you invest in technology and physical store, of course, because people, they want to see that you are in that place, in that area. Uh, the challenge is, of course, to, to make the, the, the right agreement with all these provider and to, be, uh, to try to be, uh, to have a good, uh, let's say, um, uh, to compare with the, with the big company that they already have now this market in their hand and they, they invest a lot of money. So uh, you, we really have to be very dynamic. And as Anna said before, you have to move yourself uh, to find uh, the right tool in the right moment and to be, uh, to be in that place and the people can be interested and to see you and they can trust you and uh, you have to find the right communication that talk to the people because now uh, when you talk with the people it's not easy to find only one way you know because if you speak with the young asian guys they are different to the young american guys or vice versa so uh, it's very important it's very important to make the right investment to work and to invest uh, digital is not easy and it's not cheap. It's gonna be even quite expensive. And if you don't find really the, the, the right partner and the, the right, uh, uh, say, strategy, it can be dangerous. But that's the future, no way. Uh, E-commerce have to work with the retail, and retail have to work with the e-commerce, with the digital. Um, and every day, uh, the situation changed and every day we have to find a new, new way to work. For example, uh, when you work, as we say before, in the digital, you really have to take care about uh, how to involve, how to, to convince new client, prospect clients to, to buy your product, no? to know your product, to know your brand. So uh, that's the big challenge because, uh, you know, again, everybody, speak different language for us for example it's very important instagram it's very important you no know, uh, for example whatsapp if you go in uh, in asia they, uh, they do everything with wechat so you have to know exactly what to do with wechat and exactly how to invest in this kind of um, uh, hello 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 i lost you <laughs> I think we have for a little while. Yeah. So I would like to add to what Angelo started saying uh, about Instagram and uh, right. social media. So um, we have to be really careful and smart about uh, communication with uh, customers. And it's not only about trying to sell. We actually need to build relationship. And um, based on that, creating experiences is super important and i would like to mention one of them is basically instagram filters so it builds brand awareness you cannot actually track and understand the return of investment into those filters but at the same time people interact with your brand and you are in their mind which is super important Second, uh, I would like to say that hashtags are super important too to build a community. Because if you build a community, people feel part of it and they are kind of engaged and they probably also feel some duties maybe in front of you. So this is super important as well. I agree with you, Anna. I agree with you even because oh, people 
people they want to have experience in their life now uh, physical experience or digital experience if you can see that now people are ready to invest now on the uh, i mean now because you have the, the lockdown but before they were investing a lot in uh, traveling go to restaurant uh, then know spa and so on and so on and they want to do the same experience in a different way of course in a digital, digital system i totally i totally agree with you both so let me just try to recap a little bit. So artificial intelligence, augmented reality, so try on communication with social network, story making. So we were talking about, I think, so many different things that were not new, but maybe not everyone was investing in an appropriate way. But listening you talking, I have one more question because when Angelo was talking about the difference between different social networks in different countries and also Anna, they're focusing a different way to use the social network. What about localization? I understand that after pandemic, from global to local, Every country, or let me say continent, are making their own way. China, it's becoming China, world. South Korea, Japan, United States, Europe. So because people, as Anna said, stay more inside of the house, but now we stay more inside of our country. So how can you face this reality of different attitude from one country to another one as a brand and as a communicator as Anna both of you I think this is my conclusion question for Angelo and for Anna as, as a brand I can tell you that uh, uh, we really understand that we the local client the local, local market is, is very important because now uh, you can see that it's always there. So everything happening in the world is always there. It's very close to your, your area. So we know that it's very important, but we also understand that in few area, in few uh, country, it's very strong. For example, China, they can live with a local client. They don't need anyone else because they defended the, the market since the first time. And uh, they involve them every day and they develop with them every day. So. They don't need anyone else. So China is, is can go with China. Uh, United States is different, for example, because the United States, they, they really, I mean, the market is very strong, but in the same time, from my point of view, during the last years, they didn't defend the market. They didn't defend the product. No, they always make special price, discount on discount. So people, they, they don't use to buy anymore uh on full price and sometimes the price is more important than the quality of the products uh in europe uh, even if we do our best the local market is very 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 small so again when i think about your question i think that the global market is in the hand of the digital no way and if you want to survive in this moment when you don't have tourists because let's say that's again European market, Asia, American market, they live with the tourists. They don't live with the, with the local, no way. Even if you want to push this kind of, uh, um, of um, you know, uh, challenge with the, with, with the local, we can't because we live with tourists. So uh, for few areas, the, the global market, the, the, the digital market is the only way to talk with the other uh, client all over the world. Uh, physical we have to wait that the tourists will come back in few era well interesting anna which is your opinion about local okay i have quite a few things to say and um, first of all i'm really happy with the outcome and unfortunately covid happened and it was a bad experience to many of us but at the same time in terms of the fashion industry i think it did actually good hello Yes. Sorry, I lost you because my um, laptop just went to sleeping mode. Sorry. Um, in terms of local and global, for us as a digital marketplace, it's amazing because, first of all, um, potential customers 
uh, start paying attention more at local brands and we can sell them globally, which is amazing. And uh, those local brands, um, first of all, get support within their local communities, but at the same time, they can still work outside and deliver to international customers. So the world is their oyster. Uh, and at the same time, I would like to also mention governments because nowadays maybe governments will actually of some countries start realizing that fashion industry is so important and can generate a lot of profit and for and increase their economies actually make it better because very often fashion is not taken serious in some countries i know spain takes fashion really serious italy does but many countries for example like ukraine <laughs> not really and i'm glad that um, it will be changing great very interesting so you know i would like to stay and remain for other hours but i think you want to you want to make the conversation in another in other step as well so thank you very much thank you thank Anna. you thank, thank you so much Yata. really thank you i wish to see you in person so i think anna is trying the way to come to italy angelo who knows i will yeah he will so physically will be an important aspect for every one of us because we want to feel and touch and smell it so thank you very much and thanks to all the participants you can follow us in youtube very soon you direi ciao grazie i like also to use italian so thank you very much thank you grazie grazie a thank tutti you. ciao bye thank you.